Guys, today you're going to get a special treat because I'm going to introduce somebody that many of you know, one of the best offensive line coaches in all of America, whether it's high school, college, or the NFL. And that's our offensive line specialist here for Coach TF365, and that's Brian Hamilton. Brian was a client of mine for over 11 years, and at one time he led the state of California, his team did, in passing. The very next year, they led the state of California in rushing. That shows somebody that understands not only how to coach, but especially how to coach offensive linemen. And today now he's been in college football for several years, and Brian is going to be the one person that's going to teach you how to make your offensive line a plug-and-play offensive line. He will give you the best details that there is, both in scheme and fundamentals. So if you want to have the best season ever, make sure that you get to CoachTF.com and become one of the top 5% of all the coaches in your profession. Now on to today's offensive line training with Coach Brian Hamilton for Coach TF365. Hi coaches, I'm Brian Hamilton and welcome to another Coach TF365 O-line training session. I'm Brian Hamilton. I'm currently the tight ends coach at Texas State University. Previous to that, I was the O-line assistant head coach and run game coordinator at Murray State. Before that, I was uh, the assistant offensive line coach at the University of California, Berkeley, where I worked uh, with Coach Franklin on a daily basis. Uh, prior to that, I was a head high school football coach in California for 15 years. So experience uh, working and developing these positions at all levels. And today, what I want to share with you guys are your key emphasis for your summer workouts with what we call tight ends and extra hats. The first thing that we talk about is you've got to emphasize it right from the start. And we talk about finishing like a pro. And what does that mean? It means belly to belly suffocating in the run game. It means extension in pass pro. When running a route, we want to be a big target. And then when we get the ball, we want to welker and knife up field. These tight end extra hat pieces are a very interesting position group because at the high school level, you may have a true tight end. You may also have to move guys to this position in order to set front or create an offensive advantage. It could be a big slot receiver. It could be a small slot receiver. It could be an extra offensive lineman or a young offensive lineman. So when we talk about developing these guys over the summer, it's a little bit different than developing a traditional position group. When we're talking about the run game, we're going to talk about the first and step and step progression in the run game. We're going to review zone covered and zone uncovered footwork. We're also going to review their down block progression, okay? emphasizing that the tighter the alignment, the more vertical our first two steps are. Then, especially with these tight end pieces, we're going to talk about a backside cutoff. We're also going to talk about a lead cage. And I describe it as lead cage because it's very similar to the cage drill in the screen game that we use with the offensive line. And we're going to change the points, and the aiming points, and the targets, and leverage of these defenders that we're leading on for lead zone, lead counter type plays. We're gonna talk about the ax progression, reviewing how to work with an offensive lineman on a double team block to a backside linebacker. And then so we can be involved in counter and gap schemes, we're gonna talk about an open toed pull and a skip pull. Now, with this position group, you're not gonna be able to hit all of this daily, but as a member of the system, you're gonna get drill work to fit each of these categories to break out throughout the week. When we're running routes, we're gonna emphasize sinking the hips. And this helps us transition. It allows us to make that sure that almost all of our routes threaten vertically, but it has the ability to sink our hips at the top of a route and break that route in the, uh, whatever direction required to run the route properly. We're gonna talk about foot and hand fire. Again, this is a great way to break into a route, firing our feet, sticking the defender, 
And I talk about foot and hand fire because if my feet are moving, but my hands are, not I'm not going anywhere. We're going to talk about clearing a defender with a rip and a heel step, clearing that defender while still moving vertically in our route. For our hand combats, we're going to talk about the clip rip and the clip drive. Two excellent ways to knock a defender's hands off us as we're trying to run our routes. As a tight end, extra hat, most of our routes are gonna be contested early. We've got to be able to avoid contact and get to our route landmarks. And then we're gonna talk about line of scrimmage releases. Also important with this position group is to cover scheme. And here's why. Again, some high schools have dedicated tight ends. When I was at Concord High School, we did not have a dedicated tight end. We had kids that we needed to play tight end in certain situations. This over the summer was the best time to start talking about front ID, listening to how the center's calling it and knowing how that affects my job. The next thing that we need to talk to them about and show them is leverage ID. Where's the second level defender and how does that affect our first level steps, footwork and landmarks? Then we're gonna to talk to them about context clues. And these are the things that a defense is telling you by their pre-snap alignment. Whether it be a safety stacked over a linebacker, right? Whether it be a linebacker really tight to the line of scrimmage and the defense offset a little bit. Very frequently a defense is going to tell you what's coming next post-snap. And then we're gonna to talk to our tight ends about coverage identification. Am I gonna get man or am I gonna get zone? And how does that change the timing of my route, the release of my route, and if it does, the landmark of my route. When you talk about conditioning, the tight ends, everything is still pad level like an offensive lineman, especially with these tight end and extra hats. They have to learn to move like an offensive lineman with a strong blocking demeanor. Every rep is play related. That means that we're gonna be fit up in the run game. We're gonna have extension and pass pro. We're gonna be small while we're running our route and big at the top. That's a very dynamic movement. That is conditioning. And then we're always gonna talk about finishing through the whistle, right? So I'm gonna have my feet moving until the whistle. If I'm gonna block, blocking until the whistle. If I've caught a ball, I'm finishing through the echo of the whistle. I'm exploding up field, getting vertical and finishing with that Welker tight knife, Welker turn, Welker turn and a knife finish. I'm going to split the defense and get vertical as fast as possible. And that is all conditioning. We're gonna teach them to line up as fast as humanly possible. They've gotta know their alignment regardless of our tempo. When we, even if we don't want to play fast, we wanna line up fast to make the defense show their cards. The other advantage to the tight end is the faster we line up, the faster that the center can ID the defense and tell us where we're going based on the front calls. The other thing is we always have to be ready for a non-ID play, a hyper speed play. So if you're always lining up fast and threatening the defense that you can snap it as fast as possible, you're going to catch them. And then you are going to be able to snap it right when the referee spots the ball and you're going to buy an advantage back to your offense. Over the summer, you've got to practice your signals and front calls. That means relaying your hand signals, right? When you're not in, make the signal and the call, right? Make sure that you're not just letting them read off a card, that you're actually practicing the mechanics of lining up. Let them help create their signals and calls. And then once one man has ID'd it, everyone echoes. This is especially important for the tight ends and extra hats to know who they have based on the play call. When we're coaching tight ends over the summer, our pad level must be emphasized. We've got to work off our insteps with a base in the run game. We talk a lot about power to power transitioning the power through the ground, through our feet, into our hips. That's why we talk about hip transition, bringing our hips through on the run, in the run game. Don't undercoach bad players, especially at this position, okay? You might not have exactly who you want as your tight end. You might not have exactly who you want as your extra hat, but they can help dictate how a defense lines up, and that can buy you a schematic advantage in a game plan. Start everyone the same, especially at this position, because you've got to the last point, find out what they do well. And once you find out what they do well, then you can organize a game plan based around what this position group can do when you put them in. Now, again, if you're using an extra offensive lineman, 
You're going to think about using this more in a run emphasis RPO typed offense. If you're working it with a big slot, right? It's a great way to set a defensive front and allow that backside slot to backside or the allow him to cut off the backside or lead to a front side nickel, a player he would probably be blocking already, even in a spread set. It's a really unique position group, but it's one that you need to address over the summer. If you just start game planning during season, once you see that a defense will give you an advantage based on alignment of tight ends and extra pieces, it will be too late to develop that player. And playing good football is always playing good football. If I'm blocking, I need to have a wide base. I need to lead with my hands. I need to finish with my hips, regardless if I'm playing center or if I'm playing Y. In pass protection, I need to have extension. Once I have extension, then I'm just in my mirror game. Again, whether I'm a tackle, whether I'm a tight end, or whether I'm a fullback, an H-back, whatever you want to call it, you need to learn how to extend in the run game. If you're teaching a player that has been an offensive lineman, maybe as a freshman, and now you're going to use him in that role as a sophomore, you're going to need to teach him to be small in his routes until it's time to get big. You're going to need to teach him how to combat hands so that the defense never dictates his route. The defense can never dictate our depth, and they can never dictate our release. That's our job as coaches to make sure that we put those young people in a position to succeed. This is a really fun position group, and it really can help make your offense a lot more dynamic, but you need to start developing them now over the summer. And again, I would advise developing a plethora of them. Don't just pick one or two kids. Pick six or seven kids that you think might be able to do this. Because once you know what their gifts are, you can then call and design offensive plays around what they already do well. But again, if you just wait until season to start adding this stuff in, it's already too late. So make sure that you're using this time to teach these guys how to be million dollar players. I love what Travis Kelsey says is the tight end has to beat $15 million safeties in the pass game. And he's got to block 15 million defensive ends in the run game. It's a difficult position, but one that if you work and find what young men do well, can really enhance your offense. And we've got a ton of different things that we've done with tight ends over the years in TF365. Again, we've got cut clips using a, a young man that was a walk-on at the University of California that's still playing in the league as a tight end that was never over 215 pounds in the Pac-12. We also have clips of offensive linemen changing jerseys on the sideline and coming in and playing tight end in goal line tight situations. This video is to make sure that you start to have the tools to develop it over the summer. And if you become a member, or you already are a member, you're getting the drills associated with all the progressions and steps to build these players. Guys, I'm Brian Hamilton. It's been great talking to you. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Look forward to talking to you guys again. Hope to hear from you here at TF365. Have a great day. That's it, everybody. Those are the life-changing, career-changing, career improvement points that we have for today. If you enjoyed this, please go visit coachtf.com. Better than that, book a call with me today. Get on the phone and give me a call. Improve your life. And then the most important thing, never forget, do something good today for somebody who could never repay you as long as you live. If you do that, you'll have lived a great life. One last thing, guys, we have to give you a gigantic thank you. We had such a successful debut with the Coach Tony Franklin podcast only because of you. You guys went, you watched, you gave us five-star reviews. Please make sure you do this. Go back now. Subscribe to the Coach Tony Franklin podcast, wherever it is that you watch, whatever your favorite place is to watch it from, please subscribe. And if you didn't give us a five-star review, please go back and give us one. And then just remember, every week on Monday and on Friday, 
We're going to have a brand new episode for you. So make sure on those days that you put on your big boy pants, because if you enjoyed those, you're really going to enjoy what we've got coming next.